Some years ago, at an informal gathering, a paleontologist friend handed out a series of lumpy, spiky rocks and suggested we all touch them with the tips of our tongues. Several people giggled at the odd tingling sensation, a bit like popping candy, like it was sucking the moisture out of our tongues. He waited until everybody had tried it before he told us what the rocks were. They were dinosaur coprolites, fossilised dinosaur poo. Almost everybody recoiled in revulsion, hurriedly putting their rocks down and spitting into tissues whilst our host laughed like a drain. What we had all licked were rocks, as solid as the walls of the building we were in. There hadn't been poop for tens of millions of years, but even so, the power of the cultural taboo over defecation was enough to make the room erupt in cries of Ew, that's disgusting! Despite their use in fertilisers and industrial processes going back centuries, there is a societal aversion to urine and faeces that spans the globe. The invention of modern sanitation is rightly considered a cornerstone of modern society, which kick-started a revolution in health. Safely disposing of our waste products helped us control infections that still kill in parts of the world that don't have access to clean water. Keeping defecation separate from the rest of our lives has become synonymous with civilization, and the taboos that have arisen around it reflect our modern perception of it being a dirty, impolite subject. For most parents, toilet training their kids is one of their highest priorities, and when those kids become old enough to tell jokes, poop is amongst their favourite subjects. A child who soils themselves at school or gets exposed as a bedwetter is instantly the target of playground bullies and cruel jibes. Just as sanitation has become a hallmark of civilization, controlling our personal toileting has come to represent a key stage of growing up. This is a channel about autistic life and issues. So why am I talking about toileting? Well, it's because of a small group of unhappy individuals who want us to believe that incontinence is a symptom of autism. On social media, and even in a few articles in the mainstream press, certain parents or siblings of autistic people have attempted to undermine the knowledge, compassion or commitment of autistic advocates by comparing us to the autistic adult in their lives. That person we're compared to will often be described, among other things, as still wearing diapers or nappies. In associating incontinence with autism, they invoke the shock of the defecation taboo. According to their external third-party view of autism, real autistic people can't control bladder or bowels. So those of us with independent lives either aren't really autistic, or we're so high-functioning we don't understand or care about what they insist on calling severe autism. Let me be straight. There is nothing to be ashamed of in being incontinent. There are all manner of medical reasons why someone may not have full control over their bladder or bowels, and there are products available for the purpose. The idea of having little accidents when we laugh or sneeze has even become a successful advertising tool. But there is still a social stigma attached to the idea of incontinence, despite it being something most of us will experience at some time in our lives even if that isn't until old age. In truth, there is no evidence, either scientific or colloquial, which supports the idea that incontinence is any more common in autistic people than in non-autistic people. But we can identify where the idea probably came from. Sensory differences are a relatively new field in the reactionary world of autism research. Autistic people frequently experience heightened, hypersensitive sensory responses, as well as lowered hyposensitivities. They can apply to external senses of the outside world or perceptions, as well as internal senses of what's going on in our bodies, known as interoception. I've talked before of my own interoceptive hyposensitivities to fatigue and hunger. I never feel a bit tired. I'm either wide awake or fighting to keep my eyes open. I don't get snacky or peckish. I'm sated and full or I'm ravenous and empty. 
What I and others rarely talk about is that our interoceptive sense of needing the toilet can be much the same. I only know that I need the toilet at the last minute. I don't ever get the feeling that I might need to get to the loo soon. I get a minute or two before it's too late. Often that warning can be painful too, making it even more urgent to attend to. This interoceptive difference is nothing like incontinence, but if I was stopped from acting on those last minute warnings, it might look like it. A while ago, a non-speaking autist told me of how their move into independent accommodation also heralded their freedom from adult diapers and the rashes and sores that came with them. For 20 years, they had tried to signal their need to use the toilet to their parents and been ignored. Their cries for help treated as meaningless babble and their agony looked on as aggression. They had been physically blocked when they tried to leave to go to the toilet as if they were, in their words, attempting to escape. They were subjected to years of ABA therapy, primarily aimed at getting them to speak. Yet those so-called autism professionals were also unable to spot the signals that always preceded a soiling incident. The parents even used to feed them diuretics and anti-diarrhea drugs before they took them out in an effort to stop them embarrassing themselves in public. It wasn't until at the age of 21 that they were moved to an independent living complex with access to their own toilet and later AAC communication that they were finally allowed to take control of their own toileting. They aren't incontinent. They're like myself and thousands of other autists who simply don't get much warning that we need the loo. But their attempts to communicate their desperate need were interpreted as nonsense, anger or attempts to run away. Those who'd like to characterise myself and other advocates as fake or a different high-functioning kind of autistic don't often know about interoceptive differences such as ours because they're not interested to know. They see a line drawn between us and the autist they want cured. So they use one of society's greatest taboos to make sure others see that line. They don't even realise that in doing so, they may be saying a lot more about themselves than anyone else. In discussion with other adult autists, it seems that interoceptive hyposensitivities over the need to use the toilet are quite common. Informal inquiry suggests that around 40% of autists get less than two minutes to attend to that pressing call of nature. Around 20% say the signals are painful. It's surprisingly common, yet if you ask any of the regular experts in autism about this particular variety of interoceptive difference, they'll be unlikely to know anything about it. Not all of those described as adult diaper wearers are non-speaking. But even those who have no difficulty in communicating our needs often found ourselves dismissed by parents and educators when we expressed our urgent need for the smallest room. Parents would tell us off for being impatient, awkward or for not having gone earlier. Educators and employers may tell us we can only use the toilet in our allotted breaks or penalise us with punishments or docking our wages when we go outside those times. Even social situations can be derailed when our sudden need to nip to the loo is interpreted as rudeness. I said earlier on that there is nothing for anyone to be ashamed of in being incontinent. It's a common medical problem which affects millions of people across the world at any one time. But it's extremely shameful to use someone else's incontinence as a battering ram to win arguments or to infantilise people, autistic or not. It's even worse if the perceived incontinence is not a medical problem but a result of your own unwillingness or inability to understand when someone communicates their urgent need to use the toilet. Using shock value to divide opinion and gain sympathy is both crude and desperate. It's a sure sign of an argument already lost. There is no logic in dismissing the knowledge and experience of autistic people and distracting from that by appealing to the most base of emotions like shock and revulsion is the last ditch thrashing of a cornered animal. In truth, medical incontinence is no more common in autists than it is in non-autistic people, however much the martyrs, the money men and the misanthropes may say otherwise. Whether we are physically incontinent or ignored when we signal our needs, 
using our toileting habits as a blunt instrument to stifle debate is not only a low blow, it's incredibly disrespectful of the people being described. It is using one of society's oldest taboos to slap us in the face. If you're ever tempted to dismiss an autistic person with something like, you're nothing like my severely autistic diaper wearing child, think again. The only person you'll be shaming is yourself. Thank you for watching. This channel is made possible by the contributions of our patrons on Patreon and the expanding range of merch we sell on TeePublic. If you want to help support Autistomatic, you'll find links to both in the description and on autistomatic.com. You can subscribe on this link for more weekly videos on autistic life or watch another video right here.